COP26 just ended. This was the most important climate conference since the 2015 conference which produced the Paris Agreement. This is because it was the first of their five-year global stock takes. And so the outcome of COP26 may have a big impact on whether or not we're actually able to cut emissions in half by 2030. So it's an incredibly important conference to follow and report on critically. Now the biggest news shows on TV are not cable news shows. They are network evening news shows. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir has 8 million viewers a night. That's more than Tucker and Maddow get combined. So I decided to look at the episodes of World News Tonight during the two-week climate conference to see how the most watched news show in the country was reporting on the conference and just communicating climate change in general. We're gonna turn now to the ABC News series, Climate Crisis Saving Tomorrow. Last now the issue I found with the coverage is, is not the amount of coverage. It's the type of coverage. Actually, the sheer minutes devoted to the climate could be much worse. The show's 30 minutes, minus six or seven minutes of commercials, so roughly 24 minutes of actual programming. From October 31st to November 12th, they gave about 20 minutes to climate-related topics. Democracy Now! devoted a whole two weeks to COP26, but when you go in with the expectations of a t-ball coach, 20 minutes over two weeks isn't bad. No, the issue is the type of coverage. Because yes, there was a little reporting on COP26 specifically. They had a reporter broadcasting from Glasgow, Scotland, where the conference was taking place for a couple of the episodes. But that was perfunctory, read very straight, nothing shocking or especially critical. More than 100 countries signing a pledge to limit emissions of methane, a greenhouse gas that's a leading cause of global warming. Leaders also promising to end deforestation by 2030. But today, the president acknowledging criticism that wealthier nations like the U.S. still aren't doing enough. And that was a very small portion of the coverage. The average piece of climate coverage, though, is a little report about some place in the world that's experiencing the effects of climate change or is otherwise directly related to it. We're going to turn now to the ABC News exclusive inside Madagascar. Tonight, the U.N. warning of that first famine driven entirely by climate change. We are allowed on board one of the only flights into southern Madagascar. Five years of drought here. And we find a village where we've been told mothers have now brought their children for help. Were you worried about your little boy? Yeah, she was worried because this child is uh, malnourished. What are we witnessing right now as far as climate? It's something really new. It's a change in the, in, in the landscape. Having sandstorm in this kind of landscape, it's not something usual. And having the effects of sandstorm shows that uh, nature is changing, the environment is changing, and the climate change is affecting this, uh, this, uh, this area more than, than the rest of Madagascar. Obviously, there's nothing that can replace showing the material reality of actual people and the suffering that is likely only going to get worse. That's all great. That is the kind of coverage that's often withheld from people who don't have enough utility to the state or would be problematic to cover otherwise. No, they didn't dive into the role of governments or the role that any one entity is playing or has played historically. Again, we're watching T-Ball. But it motivates people and shows them it's real in a way that sometimes you can't by just showing a giant piece of ice and saying that it used to be a bigger piece of ice. And here is proof of that. Tonight, the World Food Program says after our reporting, They've received $1.8 million in donations, more than 11,000 donors and counting. A husband and wife saying it was the little girl with the extended belly and the beautiful, soulful eyes who caught her attention. Please use this gift to help the thirsty and hungry in Madagascar. So two things here. First, it feels fairly immodest to report on how consequential your own reporting was. I, I think if they wanted to spend a couple more minutes on it, they. They could have done so without so much self-congratulations. But the other thing is, and this is not to diminish a couple million dollars going to a cause, but $1.8 million isn't that much money relative to ABC. I mean, if some medium-sized YouTubers raise $2 million, that's great. But doesn't it feel slightly insincere for a show that's owned by Disney to brag about $2 million? That's less than a single day of ad sales for ABC, and it's half what Disney spends just on lobbying every year. So showcasing how you were able to direct to charity an amount of money that is pennies to ABC feels a bit distasteful. But you know what's weird? For a show that purports to care so deeply about those affected by climate change, they sure do play it right up the middle when a business interest is involved. Should Alaska protect these sacred trees to help mitigate climate change or expand the logging industry and the local economy? 
the Tongass is the last national forest that still allows large-scale clear-cut logging of ancient growth trees. Logger Eric Nichols says they have access to only a small portion of the forest and argues that cutting down more trees will help Alaskans more than it would harm the environment. That's where your Amazon box is going to come from. American consumers still want this stuff. We're producing it here. It's a good job for the U.S. people, good jobs for Alaskans. The debate goes well beyond the Alaska wilderness, and what happens here could impact us all. Tongass is critical to the planet, responsible for removing nearly 8% of our country's carbon emissions. Alaskan. Conservation advocate Meredith Trainer argues that the loggers here can't see the forest for the trees because she says these trees create what's called a carbon sink. With these big trees, with these old forests, they're able to store carbon so it's not in the atmosphere. It's kind of like a bank that protects us from those impacts. She says logging these ancient trees will only exacerbate climate change. We just shouldn't be doing it anymore at this point in time. The jobs argument is always used as a cudgel by any company that wants to continue making money by doing something that they shouldn't be doing. The logging industry isn't there to provide jobs. They're there to make money. And if they could automate those jobs away, they would. So that argument is insincere to begin with. But what message does this really send to viewers? I don't see how a show like this does anything but fatigue and confuse them. Fatigue from reports about dire situations that viewers ultimately can't conceive of a way to ameliorate, other than to throw some drops in the charity bucket, but also confused because you're fed super conflicting and vague and unhelpful messages. Here's a forest. It's a critical carbon sink, but those logging jobs. So how critical is the forest? Or world leaders made pledges about emissions but protesters said the pledges weren't good enough. End of report. No details. Both sides were covered, but no one learned anything. There was another quick segment they did about climate change in Antarctica, where they talked about penguins and the melting ice, and then a scientist said that the best thing you can do is spread the word. This is a global emergency, but all you have to do is tell people about it. Can you think of another emergency where all you have to do is tell people about the very fact of its existence? And addressing that emergency may or may not have to be weighed against saving a couple thousand jobs.